Howdy everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today we are doing something a little different. You can see here, we are going to be doing a little bit of a tutorial, mainly for new players and then I know PS5 and PS4 are getting Space Engineers as well. You can see it right over here. Um, but because of that, I know there's a lot of people wondering, you know, with the Automatons update and all the DLC that are up here, um, the different stuff you can do that a lot of people just don't use. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to actually start a new game. I'm going to run you through the basics and basically get you started. And from there, you can go on and make your own creations. So what we're going to do, I'm going to go to load game because I already have it made up, but I'll show you the settings that I have and what we're working with. So when you hit new game, it will ask you, you'll see this screen. Now these are all scenarios that you can do. They're kind of like story missions in a way. Um, feel free. The first jump definitely helps. Um, learning to survive, it'll get you a lot of the basic stuff as well. Um, but what we're going to do is go to custom game because in my experience, and this is just me, everybody learns differently. Um, I kind of learn better with figuring it out for myself. Um, you can also go to workshop. There's people that make scenarios and stuff like that. You can browse in that, but I know on console, there's not very many, um, compared to on PC. So what we're going to do is go to custom game. Now you can choose where you want to start. What I'll normally do is I'll go down here to star system. Um, because you get multiple planets, moons, asteroids. Um, these other ones you do as well, but not as many. Um, normally you get like a planet and a moon. Um, maybe a couple other small things. Maybe a second planet, depending on which one you pick. Um, sometimes there's already bases made for you that you can start on. Um, I like building everything from scratch. That way we can teach you what's going on. Um, we're going to keep it in survival mode, offline, private, friends, and public. Uh, public, anybody can join. Offline is just what it says. No one can join whether you want to or not. Friends, that means friends can join you. They do not have to be sent an invite. And then private, everybody has to be sent an invite. Max players, if you go to choose, say you want only your friends to be able to join you, you can set how many you can have at a time. Four is usually default. Um, you start getting up into the higher number of players, it, the game will start to get a little laggy. Um, just because of the engine that the game runs on, the amount of blocks in the area, all the stuff being loaded at once. It tends to take a toll but we keep it on offline for now and then i will go to my save now when you save out of a game and get back in you can just go to load game and this is where you're going to have the list of all the worlds that you're in these ones with a little folder next to them are servers um, mine for some reason will not load if i double click on it it just brings up like the folder um, we don't need that. So what we are going to do is go into the tutorial. If you want to edit any of the settings after you start your game, there are some basic settings in game that you are able to change, but this is where you would go to change those same settings. Now in mine, the mods that I have are very basic. Um, colors there's a compass at the top build vision allows you to see um kind of like a menu without going into consoles and i'll show you more about that later build info just gives you a little bit of extra info about the block you have in your hand and about the place um, text hud and rich hud are just precursors to these two so with some mods on consoles it may be a little different um I know some of the console mods do have uh, precursor ones that you would need, but um, 
some mods like build vision and build info need text hud api and rich hud master to allow these to actually show up correctly um, but this is all i am doing they are just quality of life um, just some decoration basically none of them change how the game is played um, minus build vision maybe but that's just basically skipping a step so you don't have to go into console um, and then if we go over to advanced everything in here is default minus the block limits I have those turned off so if you want to turn off block limits that's where you go to do it you can change your character inventory size how efficient the assemblers are refineries um, how fast welding is uh, all, all that kind of stuff you can also come down here and turn off like auto healing um, spectator is off by default so you would have to come in here to turn it on um, and I'll show you what that is later thruster damage all that kind of stuff you can turn these on off whatever you want to do whatever best fits your playstyle and will make you feel either more towards the roleplay aspect or if you just want to go in and create a bunch of stuff um, whatever suits your style so what I didn't show in the first part was progression some people like to turn progression on and off um, some people like progression on simply because it gives an aspect of um, you have to learn how to do something before you can build it um, I play with it off just so I can build what I need when I need it um, feel free to learn as you go feel how you like it um, but this is how I play and I know a lot of people play with it off the progression system can be a little tedious so what we're gonna do is we're gonna click on the tutorial one and hit load now it may take a minute to download the mods that you needed um, and be able to actually get in there with them but normally it's a pretty easy thing to do okay so when you first pop into the world this is the menu you're going to be at this is the spawn menu if you die in the world without a respawn point this is where you'll be brought to so we are just going to start on the Earth-like. Each one of these has a different play style to them. So Earth-like is going to be your easiest. It has the oxygen, has the gravity, and it says easy right up here. If you go to Titan, it's hard. It has 0% oxygen. The gravity is lighter, but that also means ships act differently when you go to build them. Same thing with Pertum, Europa, all these. So... We're going to start on the Earth-like drop pod and hit respawn. And here our ship kick on. And there we go. So this is our little drop pod. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to press V or whatever it is for consoles and I'm just looking around as we come along we did not start in a great area um, but we can work with that this is if you can follow me along with this one um, then the easier spots will just be just be that they'll be easier and touchdown so while you are in a seat and have no control of your ship you have a free cam normally if you want to look around like this you're gonna hold left alt you can see the little toolbar thing pop up and that will allow you to look around now we're gonna press F to get out and there we are this is us hi how you doing ooh breaking my neck but we're gonna go back into first person with V and we're gonna look around so we've started kind of on a mountainside which isn't terrible we can definitely work with it just makes getting around a little more difficult that's all so first thing we want to do is 
see if anything's broken on here. Because if it is, that changes kind of what we can use later. So we're missing the motor and a steel plate from this. So we'll just keep a mental note of it. But it looks like that's the only thing. So good. We're doing pretty good so far. Next thing we want to do is you see the tools at the bottom, the toolbar. So you have a welder, a grinder, and a drill. If you hold out your welder and go up to any of these blocks, you can see it gives you the information on the right side. It tells you the name of it, what it's used for, and who built it. So these are going to say it was built by me because I spawned in it. I did not physically build this ship. That is the this is the default spawn ship you will get, um, but since it's owned by me, it's going to say built by me. So this is the one we're looking for first, the survival kit. This is going to be what we are going to be living off of for a little bit. Not too long, but that's what we're going to be using. The grinder will do the same thing. It tells you the part name, what it's used for, and who it was built by. But this is going to allow you to take those parts out of the block. So you can see on this thruster, it has the steel plates, construction components, motors, all the fun stuff. If we hold left click, you can see it took some of that away. And if I open my inventory with I, I have those blocks right in my pockets. So if we go up to the uh, thruster and we hold left click with our welder out we can see it'll build it right back up now if you have progression turned on and there should have been a little short clip of that just there it will not allow you to do that you first have to learn it the progression system can be a little tedious um, because it goes from left to right so first we would have to build a basic assembler before we would be allowed to build any of this stuff. And you can see how it bridges. So to build the jump drive, you would first need to build a gravity gen, which first needs an assembler, which entail needs a basic assembler built before you can go into those. Same thing with a lot of this as you go along. Um, you would need to build a basic refinery before you can build an ore detector or uh, you have to build a regular refinery before you can build speed modules or reactors all that kind of stuff that's kind of how it goes um, it gets a little bit mundane so I tend to play with it off but you wouldn't be grinding your thrusters first anyway the first thing you're gonna do after looking to make sure what's broken on your landing craft is start digging a hole so we pull out our drill and right here seems like a pretty good spot now i'm going to right click the first couple just to oop wrong button just to get through the layers now you can see these layers are pretty much solid rock as it is. And on the side of a mountain, that's how it's going to be. If I go over here to a grassy spot and do the same thing. So you can see in the grassy area, you got this dirt layer. And then it kind of mixes in with a more dirt and less grass layer. And then you start getting to actual stone. So if you can find a spot that has just stone right at the top that's better because if we left click this and we get some stone popping out you see it says 226 230 14.1 so 230 and 226 that's pretty good for stone if i were to do that here at the grass layer you see it shows 19 61 so the stone layer is where you get better um, quantities, I guess would be the best way to put it, of stone. So we're going to pick that up, and we're going to go over to our survival kit. We're going to press F on the big yellow square, and then we're just going to double-click the stone. 
Now, it's not going to do anything off the get-go. We actually have to go into this production tab. So you have your control panel, which shows you all the different blocks on your ship. It's not going to show you cosmetic stuff like the armor blocks, um, but it shows you anything that uses electricity. Um, and then we're going to go to production. This is where you're going to build your basic stuff. So first, we can only do ingots because we don't have the iron or silicon to make computers yet. So we're going to go to ingots and it makes one with one click. Every time you click, it just adds one to the queue. What we can do is hold control and press ingots and that makes 10. If we were to hold shift and click on ingots, it adds 100. And if we hold shift and control at the same time and hit left click on ingots, it adds 1000. So that's just one way of doing that. We're going to go ahead and add about 3000 to that just so it can always have a queue of it for when we get enough stone. And we're just going to let that go while we get a bunch of stone in the system and just keep doing that. All right. So I think that's a pretty good buildup. We got some basic stuff started out. We're not going to need much at first. Um, but what we want to be careful is we don't fill up our um, survival kit here. Because this is our only storage at the moment. Um, there is some storage in the seat, but it will not transfer from the survival kit to that. And I'll explain more about that later. Um, but for right now, that's pretty good. Because if we go over and we look at iron ingots, um, or steel plates, I'm sorry. If we look at steel plates, they only need seven iron ingots. We have 350. So that's a pretty good way to get us started. I'm going to go ahead and tell it to build a hundred of that. Now, as it builds it, it's going to put it down here in the inventory. What we can do is go back to our inventory tab. We can click and drag the steel plates to us. We can double click the steel plates. Or if we want only so many, we can do control and left click. That'll give us 10. And then same thing as putting um, the ingots into production. Control will give you 10, shift will give you 100, and control and shift will give you 1,000. Um, but for right now, I'm just going to take what we have. It'll be enough to get it started. And we'll go from there. Now, depending on how long you took to do that, it could be like me um, and already start turning nighttime out. To turn your flashlights on and off, you're going to press L. Um, you can see in the bottom left, it actually tells you the different uh, buttons to press to turn all that stuff on. J being your helmet. Um, so if I go into first person here, J opens and closes your helmet. X will be your jetpack. Um, controlling with that takes a little bit of time to get used to. But you have W, A, S, and D to move. And then you have Q and E to rotate. And then mouse to just look around wherever you want to go. And that is the fuel for that is the H2 down in the bottom left. You see that orange bar. O, that looks like a little Wi-Fi symbol. That is actually your broadcast. So if you have other players with you... Um, or if you have an antenna to a specific ship, that's how you're going to be able to communicate between the two. But for right now, we're just going to turn O off. Uh, we have oxygen on this planet, so we're going to do J. And that should be good. And we're going to leave our light on just so we can see what we're doing. Now, to get set up, it basically sets you up with the basic uh, blocks that you'll need for a starter base. So we're going to use this light armor block first, but if you want to use a different one in the future, you press G to open this menu up, and all the blocks are right here. 
Um, of course, it says all blocks, so it'll go down through. You'll see these all have plus signs next to them. That's because they're broken down into their basic stuff right now. So this is the light armor block, but it has all these different ones in it with the light armor slope, the corner, inverted corner, and so on. Any of these um, blocks with a plus sign next to it, or on it, I'm sorry, will have different ones inside of it. So say you're looking for just cockpits. So you can see this one has the list of the four main on it, but you can also pick them individually just through here. And then there's a couple extras as well. But for right now, we're just going to use the basic stuff that it gives us. So we want to make sure we have the big one out for large grid. Small grid, you can definitely tell the difference. It's a lot smaller, so make sure it's the large grid one. And to change in between them, you're just going to hit that same number again. So I think... Which way are we facing? I think we're going to go kind of like this. Now to rotate a block on console, it's going to be a little different. Um, but on PC, you're going to use your insert home page up, page down, delete, and end keys. Same way you would do um, like movement. Okay. Um, you can also press B to do gravity align. Local grid, which there is no local grid, so it kind of just sets it all kind of wacky. And then free placement. We're going to go ahead and do gravity align. We're going to rotate it. Uh... I gotta go to free placement real quick so I can line it back up. But we're gonna face it towards us. Make sure we're at gravity align so it's nice and flat. And then we're just gonna do that. And that's the start of your base. The first block laid down. We're gonna make a small area here. Uh, probably three blocks wide and I'd say seven long so what I want to do is go back here and get this laid out now conveniently we're able to just walk on here through the back side um, the front we are not able to you can use your jetpack and fly up but that's fine the next thing we're gonna do is go up we're only gonna make one tower but we're going to go up about 10 blocks. Oops. There we go. Now what I want to do after that is put a block on each side of the second one down. Kind of like that. Now we're going to switch blocks and go to the wind turbine. Now it said fuel is low. So I want to make sure I'm close to the ground when that happens. Because the survival kit is our respawn point. So if anything does happen to that, it takes us back to the uh, respawn menu that we started at. But if I come over here to the blue square, that's the control for it. If I hold F on it and you watch the hydrogen down in the bottom left, it gives us hydrogen. Now it does that because if we go to inventory, it shows us just a survival kit. That's just the block we're looking at because we have the uh, helmet icon. If we hit the little square, it shows the inventory of the entire ship. There's an O2H2 generator on here and it has ice in it. So it also has a hydrogen bottle and an oxygen bottle. The oxygen bottle we don't need because we're on a planet with oxygen. But if we want to grab that hydrogen bottle, you see it's not connected to the survival kit. So we actually have to find it and it's gonna be a yellow port like this. If we click that one, this is our O2H2. So the one you interact with is always gonna be at the top. So if we want to take that hydrogen bottle 
and just drag it over, we now have spare hydrogen. And as long as you keep ice in there, it will be able to produce hydrogen for you so you can take it from your survival kit. Or if you want to refill your bottle, say this is at 0%, you just put it back in, it will fill it for you, and then you can take it back out. Simple. But we're going to take our wind turbine, we're going to go all the way to the top using our jetpack, and you see it's still red. Now I'm outside of its boundaries, so it should be green. The problem is we don't have the interior plate to place it. So different parts actually do need different materials to even place them in the first place. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back over, we're going to go to production, and we're going to tell it to build some interior plates. Now we are out of, it looks like, iron. So we're going to have to go get more. Okay. And with the power of editing, you didn't have to watch me go get a bunch, but we did get a bunch more iron. And so we should be able to see that it's making the ingots still. Now it ran out of stone, so it's going to go back to steel plate, but we're looking for the interior plate first. So what we're going to do is we're going to drag that right to where the steel plate should be. And then we're going to take the ingots and move those to the back of the line. So that's kind of how we change our priority. Make sure we're getting the things we need and not wasting the materials we don't need. So then what we can do before I leave this is grab our interior plate. I'm just going to double click so we get a bunch of that. I'm also going to grab the steel plate because we're running a little low. Now, if we grab our wind turbine, we should be able if we go up here, you see it's green. That means we can place it. So we're just going to left click and we get our little stem. We're going to do that on all four of these little outcrops. And there we go. So we have what looks like a little radio tower going on but that's kind of what we're looking for because what we're going to do is we're going to pull our welder out and we're going to go back up to the top one and we see it needs interior plates computers girders construction components motors and interior plates again now you see a little blue line there that says functional and hack if we get this built up to that functional line, it will still work. The in extra interior plate on the very top is mainly just for armor, in case it gets shot, in case meteors come down and hit you, um, or hit it anyway. That's kind of what that's there for. Most of these blocks have that. So even the basic light armor blocks had a functional line to where anything above that is going to be just strictly armor basically or extra components that you don't necessarily need it to function but you still want to have it if you want the full durability out of the item so what we're going to do is we're going to highlight and make sure that's got the green box around it and we're going to go ahead and right click that you see it says components added to build planner what that does is if you open up your g menu again it adds it down in this bottom right corner. What you can do is instead of right clicking on that, is you go to power blocks. These are everything that either generates or stores power. Here's our wind turbine. And if you right click it, it brings it down here. Say you have an empty slot down in your uh, hotbar, it will add it to your hotbar. Or, if you double click it, it'll add it to the hotbar. If you have it highlighted though, and you come down here and add it to build planner, it will add it to there. So what we're going to do, we don't need to be holding it, so we'll just 
do that. Try not to die as we fall down. <laughs> we're going to come into our survival kit, and we're going to hit this little button with the gear on it. It says add components from build planner to production queue. That's going to take all the parts we need from that wind turbine and add it to our production queue here. Now we're going to get rid of the steel plates just by right clicking them, just so we don't make anything we don't necessarily need yet. And looks like we are out of iron again. So we're going to get more and make sure we have enough to build everything. We want to make these numbers white. So we need 191 iron ingots to get that uh, turbine up and running. So let's make sure we get that. All right. So as we've been putting stone in there, you'll see that it will keep continue making the stuff that it needs. Once it runs out of stone, it will go and make the rest of the components that we're going to need. Once this is all done, we'll be able to make our wind turbine. While we are waiting for that to finish all of this, what we're going to do is we're going to make sure we still have our steel plate and our interior plate. And we're going to go ahead and place some other blocks. So first up, if we hit number five, we'll just go down the list, is the basic assembler. So this is going to be able to build a little more than the survival kit but it's not going to be everything in the game. So this is kind of what we're going to be looking at. The full assembler, or just regular assembler, will be able to make everything, but that also takes a lot more materials. You can go ahead and make an actual assembler. If we look at it, you can search, just use SS, and here's the full assembler. So the main difference between these two is the different amounts that they need to be made. It's not much more, takes a lot more steel plate, um, but everything else is pretty easy to get. The only big difference is metal grids. Our survival kit cannot make metal grids. This basic assembler can. So that's where we want to be able to get that. We also need cobalt for metal grids. So we need to be able to refine cobalt by itself, which we don't get from stone. And to do that, we need the basic refinery. So we want to get these up and going and be able to uh, make the better stuff. Kind of like an upgrade. So when placing this, you see there's the big yellow square there on one side. That's a conveyor port. The basic assembler only has one on any of its sides. So we want to make sure that whatever uh, we put this basic assembler, it's at the end of the line because it can't go out anywhere. It can only go in and out that one port. So we're going to go ahead and put this right at the end here. Now the next one, if we press number six, is our basic refinery same thing those yellow port and a yellow port there none on the bottom none on the top and there's none on the uh sides either so we want to make sure when we put this down that that yellow port is touching the one of the basic assembler but instead of going directly into the assembler we're going to go ahead and put it just on the side of it kind of like this the reason for that is we're going to go into our menu and we're going to look at the conveyor and cargo blocks. We're going to go ahead and grab the small cargo container and we can replace it with the landing gear. We're not going to need that for a little bit. So now we have our small cargo container and it shows up just like that. This has ports on all sides so we can just place it down however we want and it'll be able to transfer materials in any direction. So we're going to put that in between them because this gives us the option to actually go up, backwards, forwards, and even if we wanted, we could go down. Energy low. And our energy is low. We'll take care of that here in a second. But now that we got those three, we're going to go ahead 
and make sure by the sounds of it we have all the parts we need for our wind turbine and looks like it is done if we go to production nothing's left in here to be made so we can go to our inventory and we could pull these out and just drag them another thing we can do is if we go pull our welder out remember we have that wind turbine in our build planner so what we can do is just press our middle mouse button and it'll say all components were successfully um, pulled out so the only thing you have to watch is sometimes build planner can be very um, buggy for lack of a better term um, it'll tell you that it's pulled out all the materials and it hasn't or there's a item in build planner that you forgot about um, that it's trying to pull materials for that it can't something like that so just always check build planner make sure it's the right thing you have or um, just empty it out come up here redo build planner and then go pull the materials but we're just gonna come up here hold left click on the wind turbine it put all the parts inside and now we got it up and going so just as an example we're just below that functional line because I took out the computers and girders if I put them back and take out just that little bit I want just the interior plates please so not all the interior plates are in but the wind turbine still works so that's what I meant by the durability and having that little bit of extra always helps so we're only going to use the one for right now because what we want to do is we want to get the materials for these three so the basic refinery small cargo container and basic assembler and we're just going to go over here and with left alt and middle mouse button we're going to put all of our stuff back into production but we're also going to hold shift and middle mouse button to put those into production so it said there were two components that could not be put into production and I know what those are but if you're not really sure which ones you can always come over to these and see what parts they have that are a little bit off from like the one turbine or each other now the ones we're looking for are in the small cargo container it's the metal grids like I said the um, survival kit cannot make those and then the small steel tubes as well those cannot be made in the survival kit so we will get these welded up and I will show you where to get those from so I have our refinery and our basic assembler up and going so we can start using these because we have the wind turbine up there that is producing electricity for our different stuff if we go into this little blue square the control panel we can see our wind turbine is producing enough energy to actually use if we go to the basic refinery this needs 330 kilowatts of max required input the required input is only one kilowatt right now because it's sitting still the basic assembler also only needs one kilowatt if we were to go get some stone really quick uh, let's get a little more than that so we know it doesn't burn through it quite as fast I'm just gonna fill my inventory with it there we go now if we go over to 
our basic refinery. This time we want to hit the yellow part. And we drag over the stone. It's going to go through it really quick. You can see it goes through. But if we go to the basic refinery, its required input now is 330. That's because it's actually running. So our wind turbine is producing 331 and now 2. Its max output is what it's able to be doing at the moment. So 414, 413, depending on the wind speed. So we're good on this. We can start putting our stone into the basic refinery. The basic assembler is what we want to be looking at though. So if we go over to production, you can see here we have all the same stuff as the uh, survival kit with the biggest addition being small steel tubes and metal grids. Small steel tubes are what we're looking for with the basic assembler. So if we go into our um, survival kit and we grab our silicon and all of this stuff, we can go to the refinery. We can put that little bit of stone in there. And it just used all of it. <laughs> but we want to use the basic assembler and put all of this stuff in that. Because we can go to production. And we can see we're out of iron. So we'll get some stone. But instead of putting it into the survival kit this time, we're going to go ahead and put it all into the basic refinery. So... We got a bunch of stone put in, but you can see we're already making a bunch of different materials as well. The only problem is those materials cannot get from the refinery to the assembler. So what we want to do is grab the stuff that's in here, and it'll keep making it so you don't have to sit there and hold it all the time. Um, but we want to get that put into the basic assembler so we can start making our small steel tubes. Now, I only had it make one for the example, but what we're gonna do is we're going to make sure our build planner, which didn't clear out like it was supposed to, we're gonna make sure that's empty. We're just gonna right click on the small cargo container and we're gonna go in here and hit the button, hit those from production. Now this will also make materials at a lot faster rate than the survival kit. So you won't be standing around as long. Um, but what we're gonna do is you see the missing items is cobalt. We don't have cobalt because we don't know where any's at at the moment. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna grab our grinder and we're gonna look on our ship for anything that has metal grids on it and conveniently there's four thrusters on your ship that each have one metal grid so we're gonna go ahead and just until we get that metal grid out of there and we're gonna do that with all of them and there we go and then all we got to do is come over to our cargo container and put that stuff in it. See, it also put those motors in it, too. So, it looks like we're done building. We can right-click those grids to get them out of production so it doesn't make sit there and think it needs to make them. We'll hit our middle mouse button. My inventory's a little full, so it didn't do it right away. But we'll do that. Pull it out. You see it cannot draw them four metal grids good thing we already have those in there so we'll just go ahead and finish this off and there we go we have a refinery cargo container and basic assembler now what's cool is we can't access the yellow part of the assembler anymore but it can pull directly from the cargo container because we have that cargo port attached so we can put our stuff into the cargo container and we can also take those from there and put them in so we can move them around too but there's other ways you can get around that and have it put 
by itself in there. We'll get to that in a later episode, though. All right. So now that we have our three basic um, blocks, our production blocks, we're going to need a way to make this place a little safe and make it our new home, even if it's temporary. So that would suggest we're going to need a survival kit because we want to be able to respawn here in case anything happens. Say we're out mining or just walking around, especially being on the side of the hill here. Um, it's not a very fun way down. So we want to be able to actually have a spot to come back to, especially because this doesn't have an infinite amount of power. So on the battery, we can see three green dots. That means it's around 75%. If we go into the survival kit by pressing K, like it says there, we can check the battery and see, let's see, fully depleted in two days. Stored power is 942 kilowatt hours, which isn't bad. I mean, we still have time, but it's not infinite. So this place, as long as the wind is moving, it will always have power, even if it's very little. We can turn stuff off to ensure that our survival kit stays powered on while we're gone. Um, but it's always going to have power because of that wind turbine. So this is kind of the scary part of it, because while we're moving this from the ship to over here, we gotta hope nothing happens. Um, we do have meteors turned off, so we should be okay. Uh, let's type in survival kit. Let's bring that down. We'll just replace the basic assembler. Now, this has ports on either side. None on the bottom and none on the top. So we want to put it somewhere it can be easily accessed accessible through our little cargo container. Now I could take this block out right here because the tower won't fall because it's actually attached in between uh, these two blocks as well. Um, so we could put it there. I'm actually going to put it on the back side here, kind of dig it into the ground a little bit. Um, you'll see the reason for that later. Uh, I need some steel plate. So I'll just take that. I'm going to put it there. And then I'm going to go ahead and put my survival kit back here. The biggest reason I want to put the survival kit back here is because I can take this base and kind of dig into the hill here. And just level the terrain out. And use the stone from that to just throw into the refinery so that way i can grow my base backwards without having to worry about needing to build stairs or anything like that um, that's just my preference again find out how you want to do it if you feel like going outwards is easier and then you can just build little supports that'd be fine um, so we're gonna get everything with this and put it into oh I keep pressing the wrong buttons put it into our cargo container which will then tell the assembler to start making stuff for that now we're not going to be able to make the medical components that takes silver and you can see over here it is able to make it, but we don't have any silver. So that's why we're going to move the one from that ship over to here. Um, I do need... S well, no, I'll tell you what. Don't really need many parts made, because what we can do is just go in here, make sure we take everything out of it, or else it's just going to fall on the ground. We're going to go ahead... Put that stuff into the cargo container and then go ahead and grind this down. There we go. 
Now we just bring our welder right here and put it all back. Now we are going to need that steel plate that I put in. And there we go. And we have our survival kit again. So now I can just come right here and fill up. Now this isn't going to give us the hydrogen yet because we still don't have an O2H2 generator. We need to get one of those as well to be able to get hydrogen into our suit, into bottles. I'm now at 85%. I can sit here and hold it all day. It's not going to do anything but keep me alive power wise. So we have an O2H2 generator here, but we want one on the base. So that way we can just refill our hydrogen, do whatever we need to do. So let's go ahead and look for an O2H2 generator. We'll just put it where the basic refinery was. And this one, I'm gonna go ahead and just put on top. Keep everything a little compact. This way, if I ever decide I want to do something else, I can go out, I can still go up, and I can go back and forth. What I'm gonna do is keep those side conveyor ports towards the basic assembler. I mean, it has a pass-through, but we're just gonna put them to the side. That way, I still have a port in every direction that I can use. So I still have this port back here. I have that port facing towards me this way. I got a port right here to go in that direction. And I do have a port on top now because of the O2H2 jet. So I'm not really losing any cargo access. I'm just putting stuff in between my access points. So we're going to make sure we get this put into production. Now I already know I need more stone, um, but what I'm gonna do is go in here, take out our ice and our bottle, and I'm gonna go ahead and put those into our cargo container. So that's down here. We can click on the empty slot, see how it highlights that area. We click the empty slots, and then we can just double click what we want to go in there. So now we have the ice and the oxygen bottle in there. Perfect. So let's go ahead and put what we can into that. And I'm going to go ahead and get more stone. I'm also going to grind out this O2H2 gen. and put it into that. It's not going to be the same, but it'll get us some way. Less parts we have to make later. Eh, those are loose in there. It'll be fine for now. Let's get some stone to fill that up. And now we have our O2H2 gen. Doing good. So now that should have... Yep, it'll take the ice automatically, so that way it can start producing hydrogen. And there we go. Fills it up to 100%. I can now take that back, and we're all set. I can also go in here, and it refills. Now, we are seeing an issue where it's flashing offline like that. That means we're low on power. We do have one, two, three, four machines technically on this base. So we are going to need more power. What we can do is now that we have a bunch of stone, a bunch of materials, we can just go around and get these last four windmills put up. And there we go. Now, let's see how many components we have. 
not many. So it told us we weren't able to build a lot. So that one's still missing girders. That one's missing construction components and girders. Same thing. And even more for that one. But instead of going to get stone, what I'm going to do is make sure I'm full on hydrogen. We want to make sure we have our bottle and we get our hydrogen filled up. What I'm going to do is fly upwards and look for parts of the mountain. And it sometimes looks like these little brown spots you see where I landed, actually. But I'm looking for little spots in the ground. They're off color and they only show up in certain areas. Uh, it's kind of hard to see on the mountainside. Let me find one, and I will show you what it looks like. Okay, so it's a little hard to see. But right where my crosshairs are, are in the mountainside, you can see these little black dots. If we go over to them, you can see there's ice, silicon, and magnesium. Now, you're not going to see this if any tools are out besides the drill. Got to make sure you have your drill out, or else you're not going to be able to see them. Ores that are deep down in the mountain, or in the ground, I should say. I believe it's more than 50 meters. Um, you're not really going to be able to see too easily either. Sometimes you'll see them, they'll say 60, 70, um, but very rarely. So what we're going to do is mark this ore deposit with a GPS marker. On PC, you just press enter and it'll be slash, bit, if I can do it right myself, GPS. And then we're just going to make sure we know that it's silicon magnesium, and ice. You can put in however you want. I usually put in just either the first two or the um, periodic table version because that's what a lot of it goes off of in the game. So gold will be AU and so on. Iron is I, yeah, IR. Um, but we are looking for one that actually says iron. So I'm going to look around. Sun's coming out, so it should be a little easier to see. And we will see what we can find. They're usually not too far away from each other. We have more ice here. Might just be ice there. Now... There will usually always be two to three ores in a deposit. They might just be at different layers. So if you only see one ore at a deposit, like this one, I'm only seeing ice, you might need a larger ore detector. So you can get ones for small ships, which will give you a little more range. And then large grid will give you even more than that. So... I'm going to search around until I find some iron, and we'll be okay. Alright, so, I've been flying around, I just had to refill my bottle, but you can see I marked out iron, cobalt, and nickel over in that direction, and iron, cobalt, and nickel in that direction. I found some silicon and magnesium spots with ice. Um, but that's about it. So what we're going to do is we're going to go over to this one that's just slightly closer. Um, we do have to be careful because it is foggy and in the mountains and slamming into something a little too hard can be a little painful. But this one, the reason I want to come to this one is because, yes, it is kind of on the side of a mountain. Um, but that also works to our benefit in a way. 
because when we get a machine later, we can just come into the side of the hill and go straight for it. For now though, we're gonna dig straight down. Not directly straight down, but we're just gonna use <laughs> our drill to go at an angle towards it. All right, so there is our iron. Each ore is a different color, so that way they're easily distinguishable. Uh, iron is always going to be red. Um, cobalt is going to be a bluish. And I believe magnesium is a blue as well, I think. One of them is blue. Um, silicon is going to be black. Gold is gold, of course. Silver will be a whitish silver color and so on but i am just gonna fill up on this iron and then we will head back to base all right there we go now we can head back it looks like the weather's cleared up pretty nicely so makes it a little easier to get back home. Now you do want to slow down when flying in because not always you don't stop on a dime. So let's go ahead and put all of our stuff in there. So that can get to being made. Now the wind's not going too fast. So what we're going to do is go to our control panel our basic assembler. Turn that off for now. O2 H2 generator. Turn it off. So that way the only things using power are the survival kit and the basic refinery. Problem is we don't have much wind so there isn't much energy being produced. So we may for the time being, don't do anything stupid, but just turn the survival kit off. That way we can just go about and do what we can do. Still have my wind turbines. Let's see if that made anything. I don't believe so. No. I didn't think it would make anything while we were gone. But I'll wait for this to be done. I'll turn on the basic assembler, turn off the refinery, and then it should be able to make us our parts. No problem. Alright. Ow. There we go. We now have a starter base that will never be hurting for power. And we'll get into a little bit bigger of the machinery as we go forward. But now we can turn the rest of this stuff back on. Make sure everything's turned on. And we're good. And if we go to our survival kit, we see that we're not having any power spikes. Very nice. I like it. But, with that, I will leave you guys to that one. We will do a little bit more as far as production-wise. We'll get the bigger equipment that can do a little bit better and faster. And then we'll also look at getting those ores in a little bit easier of a fashion. Um, as far as mining goes, making our life a little bit easier. That's what Space Engineers is about. You find an issue, or you find a remedial task, and you make it better. So, with that, I'll see you in the next episode. You all have a wonderful rest of your day.